I'm Dr. Mark Attala, and I want to welcome you to my office. I'm a cognitive scientist who studies time travel and retrocausality, which is how the future influences the present. What we're going to talk about today is love, specifically love at first sight. Now, love at first sight is a retrocausal phenomenon because people are remembering a shared future at the moment that they meet the love of their life. Now, the concept of uh, love at first sight is pretty controversial among researchers. And uh, I teach a class on romantic relationships. This is one of the reasons why I'm talking about this topic. Now, it has a long history, but uh, well, long past, but a short history, I guess is what we could say. So there's examples of love at first sight in the Bible where somebody hops off of a, uh, literally off of a camel and somebody falls in love with them. Uh, in ancient Rome, they had this idea of uh, Cupid, that would sh he would shoot arrows at people, and they would instantly fall in love. And so this is a phenomena that's been around for millennium. Uh, it doesn't really fit in with um, the dominant theory of how people fall in love and why, though. And that's Sternberg's triangular theory. He says that... Uh, Consummate love, which it would be we would think of as like true love, has three components to it: passion, intimacy, and commitment. Now, many relationships are able to achieve two of those. So, for example, if you have passion and commitment, then that's like a Vegas wedding where you just get married at, on the spur of the moment, uh, but then it falls apart. You could also have um, intimacy and passion which would be like a summer romance that burns out rather quickly. And you could have intimacy and commitment, which is what a lot of marriages become for people in their 70s. There's not a lot of passion. They're not burning up the sheets every night in their 70s. Um, Sternberg says that if you can put all three of those together, that that is what consummate love is, which is the ultimate goal. Now, the reason why uh, researchers don't believe that love at first sight is um, actual love is because it's essentially just an initial infatuation and it's based on two factors this is what's believed um, one is attractiveness that uh, people who are attractive are nine times more likely to have someone instantly fall in love with them another factor is trustworthiness that um, although the research doesn't support it, people believe that they can look into somebody's eyes and trust them. So uh, not surprisingly, um, love at first sight is not usually a shared experience. It's usually one person feels it and the other doesn't. And um, that person's usually a man. So men are much more susceptible to it. Another explanation is that it is essentially a, a memory effect where people look back and say, you know what, I fell in love with them instantly. But the research doesn't really bear that out. That people uh, might, people in relationships might bicker about um, who fell in love faster or more deeper, but uh, people usually admit if they fell in love instantly. And so it's not like they make it up later after the fact. So, um, what are the commonalities, though, among people who do experience uh, love at first sight? Because, again, I would say, I think that it is remembering a shared future together, that that's essentially what's occurring. So, a f uh, five characteristics um, that people who have experienced love at first sight um, talk about. One is an initial gut reaction on meeting the person that they fall in love with, that um, they see no one else in the room. They all talk about the eye contact that they experience too, that they see that person and no one else. Um, a third factor is familiarity, where it feels like they've known this person their entire life, that it's not like they're meeting somebody for the first time, but rather that they're seeing a friend that they haven't seen in years and they want to know everything about them and what's been going on. Fourth, conversations go far beyond small talk. Um, you may have experienced this where you meet somebody and you just sit and you talk for hours, and that's a, a commonality. And uh, the last 
is familiarity, which means that it, they felt like they really know this person, that they really made a connection with them. And like, as I said earlier, it's not like meeting somebody uh, who's new. It's like someone that you've known and will know for the rest of your life. Now, I didn't want to give you any famous examples of love at first sight, uh, but I could. So, uh, for example, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, he described that for him as love at first sight. And I will leave my own romantic life out of this too. But I do want to give you an example. And so I want to talk about my brother. So my brother met his wife in kindergarten and uh, he knew instantly that he wanted to be with her for the rest of his life. And he asked her to marry him at age five. Now she turned him down and she said that he was a stink pot. Those are her words, not mine. So they stayed close friends and she moved away in fifth grade. And it was, about, it was like 12 miles away, but this was the 1970s. And so there was no social media. And so she may as well have moved to the other side of the moon because uh, they never saw each other. So my brother had no girlfriends in high school and he went to college uh, from my parents' house. And so he would take the bus uh, downtown to go to college. His wife also lived with her parents. Uh, you probably see where this is going. Uh, she would also take the bus to the Art Institute where she was going to school. One day when they were 18, they saw each other across the bus. They smiled in recognition at each other and they've been together for the last 40 years. What my brother understood in kindergarten was that this was the person that he was going to spend his entire life with. And he wanted the rest of his life to start right then, to paraphrase Billy Crystal from uh, When Harry Met Sally. That uh, properly understood, love at first sight is a retrocausal phenomenon. It's remembering a future that hasn't been experienced yet. If you're interested in retrocausality and how it explains psychological phenomena, you might want to get my book, Psychology and Retrocausality. If you'd like to support my research, I have a link below on Patreon. Uh, I'd ask you to like and subscribe and share this video. And otherwise, I will see you in the future and have a great day.